Tables and columns both display information side by side, so which should you use when? This video was sponsored by my Basic Word Skills for Legal Professionals course. For more information, click the link above or in the description below. Hi, I'm Deborah Savager with LegalOfficeGuru.com, your resource for using Microsoft Office in a legal practice context. And when it comes to displaying information side by side in your Word documents, you've got a couple of options, tables or columns, but that's where the similarities end. So what should you use when? I know the answer, it depends, isn't terribly helpful when you're making that decision. So I took some time to put together some real life examples to show the context in which each feature makes the most sense. Tables, and by that I mean tabular arrangements of text that look like a spreadsheet, not tables in the sense of table of contents or table of figures, and columns perform somewhat similar functions. They arrange text side by side rather than in one continuous block. But there are key differences between the two, and you'll want to know those differences when deciding which feature to use to arrange your text side by side. So what are the differences? Columns are useful for presenting text that flows automatically from one column to another. It's like reading a newspaper or a newsletter, as in this example. Tables, on the other hand, are a grid of rows and columns that intersect to form cells like a spreadsheet. This format is most useful for presenting related information side by side, such as a list of names and information related to those names. You're not limited to the formatting shown in those previous two examples. You can have a table without borders, and what you see here are not actually borders. They're grid lines, which I can turn off. You can also have columns of unequal width with lines separating them, as in this example. In the lessons that follow, I'll show you not only how to insert tables or columns and how to use them, but also what formatting options you have. Now here's one example where you could use either a table or columns, depending on your preference. For example, I've seen both tables and columns used to display a list of addresses for, say, a certificate of service, for example. It's the same list in each entry, but look how the text flows differently in the column layout here versus the table layout beneath it. With addresses of different lengths, number of lines, the column layout takes up less vertical space than the table. This is because the table shows each set of addresses in its own row. So each address starts on the same line as its counterpart on the left or right, and each row takes up as much space as the longest address in the pair. It's a matter of personal preference. For the record, I prefer tables for this sort of thing. But this just illustrates that there's not always a clear-cut answer to the question of whether to use a table or columns for a particular text layout. You heard me mention a moment ago that I prefer tables for the certificate of service example. Actually, I prefer tables over columns overall for displaying information side by side where you'd be reading the information left to right as opposed to down one side completely, then up to the second column, etc. Here's why. I've got my show hide turned on. If you don't remember what that is, it's a sort of reveal codes mode that you turn on by pressing the paragraph button in the middle of the home tab. So you can see that before and after each column format, there's a section break, usually a continuous section break. Those section breaks are necessary to make columns work. They segregate the columns from the rest of the document. In other words, the rest of the document may be arranged in a single column, but for just this section, the text is arranged in two columns. Also, you'll probably notice there's a column break at the bottom of this first column here. I actually had to insert that into this column from the Layout tab. Those breaks, the section breaks and the column breaks, have to stay intact for the columns to work. If you accidentally delete one of these breaks, all formatting hell breaks loose, because now the remainder of your document is no longer segregated from the columns. Tables, to me, are just simpler and more stable. There's a time and place for columns, and I'm going to show you in future lessons how to insert a multi-column format safely into the middle of a document. But those breaks always make me a little nervous, so for that reason, if I can use a table rather than a column or layout, I do. As you can see, I definitely think tables are more stable and versatile than columns because of columns' need for section breaks. 
I'm all in favor of using columns in certain circumstances, but I always want to warn people about the section breaks so they don't introduce any formatting chaos into their documents. Using the right tool in the right context can make all the difference between a document that's easy to edit later and a document that turns into a nightmare. So, what do you think? Do you use either tables or columns in your documents to organize information? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in some comprehensive word training geared toward legal professionals, check out my Basic Word Skills for Legal Professionals course by clicking the link above or in the description below. This has been Deborah Savager with LegalOfficeGuru.com. Thanks for watching.